Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I do hope you're doing well, staying safe and healthy out there. I have been, I've been at home like everybody else and I'm trying to work on photos, make videos and all that stuff. I appreciate you guys showing up, watching and hanging out. I hope the videos are helpful and are giving you some ideas. And hey, by the way, if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. I make videos about how to edit your photos using different software products. I'm in Luminar 4 again. I do love Luminar 4. This is fantastic. Um, and I was playing around with a photo that was taken a late afternoon kind of sunset time in London, but it wasn't much of a sunset. And I was just kind of experimenting because I got to be honest, it's a photo that I've had for, well, I took it, you know, I don't know, a couple of years ago or whatever. Anyway, I've never liked it. Honestly, I've always had trouble getting the look that I wanted. And I finally got something that I kind of like. And I figured out a little trick just through experimentation, just kind of stumbled upon something. And I was like, I wonder if that would kind of work and help and blah, blah, blah. And then I did it and I was like, holy cow, that was pretty cool. So I'm going to show that to you. A um, little bit of a spoiler, no, not a spoiler alert, a little bit of a tease, I guess, because that trick is very uh, late in my editing. I'll try to walk through this pretty quick to get to that, but I think you're really going to like it. Let's check it out. Here's the photo. That is a base photo from London. And I was at the top of uh, what they call the walkie talkie building uh, in the sky garden with a couple of my good buddies there in London shooting out here cloudy nothing particularly inspiring hazy kind of just you know not much of a sunset and I turned it into that and I really got that sunset look through this one particular trick so I'm going to reset these filters we're going to jump into it and I'm going to get to that trick as soon as I can okay here we go base photo unedited and there it is with the light tool you can see i did a tiny bit of temperature and tint i bumped up contrast fairly significantly took down highlights and bumped shadows a little bit i didn't do anything in the advanced settings i do love the light tool i use it basically on every photo and i generally start there as well but there it is before and there it is after and again fairly uninspired i like the scene um it would have looked better later in the evening however we're shooting through glass here, which can be tricky in and of itself. So um, anyway, I got it to there. The next thing I did was AI Enhance just to kind of brighten it up. But you can see like there's not a lot of color. It, this honestly looking at it here, I probably was thinking that'd be a decent black and white simply because there's no color. And if there's no color, it's kind of hard to make the color. But I did find a way to make color. That's what I'm getting to. So um, that was all I did on the base. Um, uh, or the first tab, the Essentials tab. I popped over to Creative, gave it a little bit of Mystical, and then I popped over here to Portrait, gave it a little bit of Orton. Um, and then everything else was here in the Pro tab. Um, and if you didn't see my recent video about um, editing a photo just using the Pro tab, uh, some of the filters there, check it out. And um, there's a lot you can do with these tools. They're really powerful, hence the name Pro. Uh, that's why they're on the Professional tab, but they just give you so much power and control over your photo. The first one, uh, and by the way, I've got videos about a lot of these, like Advanced Contrast, Adjustable Gradient, Dodge and Burn, uh, Color Enhancer, and Split Toning, I think. The only one I don't have a video about is Photo Filter. So um, anyway, Advanced Contrast, you can see what I did there. I basically did some Midtones Contrast, adjusted the balance, Shadows Contrast, and adjusted that as well. So you can see the before and the after. And uh, basically, I was trying to create more contrast in the photo. The highlights contrast, I can kind of show you what that does. Not really doing anything for me. It's just fading out the top of the photo. And I kind of like it brighter. It just seems to work a little bit better for me visually in the photo. So at that point, I was done with advanced contrast. And I jumped over here to one of my favorite tools, which is adjustable gradient. Let me start on the top here. You can see I took the exposure down, added a little bit of contrast. Actually took the warmth down. Now you saw the final photo and you saw that it was rather uh, sunset looking. Um, I started out kind of going more of a blue hour kind of look and um, you can kind of tell that here. So I went a little cooler in the uh, top and then in the bottom um, I added a little bit of contrast, barely took down the shadows, also dropped the warmth there and added a little bit of vibrance. So the overall difference between adjustable gradient, there's the before and there's the after. So huge impact one more time before and after it's uh, it i think had a great impact on the photo and um and i've actually gotten to a point here where i sort of was liking the photo um but i, I didn't totally love it and part of the reason i didn't love it is because the colors they weren't really um well distributed at this point it's a little too cool in the top 
And truthfully, I kind of wanted more of a sunset because it was sunset time of day. You can see, I mean, there's a little bit of light. And in fact, um, I recall the light actually broke through, but uh, it wasn't particularly colorful. So um, anyway, I wanted to make it a bit more of a sunset. And here's a little trick I was talking about. You're thinking I'm going to color enhancer, and I did, but that's not the trick. The trick is in photo filter. You also might have thought I was going to go to split toning to hit those highlights with some warmth, but it was photo filter. So what I did is, let me turn that on. I um, picked a uh, kind of orangey red hue and amount of 38, and then I created a luminosity mess, and that would be because I wanted to apply more heavily to the brighter parts of the photo. So let me turn that mask on. There it is. You can see much more heavy applying in the sky than elsewhere. And that's how luminosity masks work. Uh, they'll identify automatically the brighter and darker parts of the photo. And whatever you're doing with the filters that the luminosity mask or, uh, is applying to will apply more heavily in the brighter areas. So I knew that was a way to kind of pop some of the light and so I did that. Now, I've got the amount at 38. I could go higher and try to get more, but it, it wasn't looking that good as I did that. So I did that, and I kind of liked the color. By the way, I said preserve luminosity. That's a little tip there, because if not, you're going to see it's going to really get um, a different kind of shade. And I wanted to preserve the luminosity of the original photo. In other words, I just kind of want the, the color. I don't want the luminosity to change. So Photo filter, pick a warm color for your sunset, apply a luminosity mask, adjust the amount. Um, and here I was kind of like, that's pretty cool, but you know, it needs a little bit of work in the colors. And hey, that's where my favorite filter, or one of them is, uh, comes into play, and that's color enhancer. So let me show you what I did there. Once again, I went in and I did a little brilliance and a little warmth, um, and then I added some color contrast in the blues. Um, and then, down here, I did some blues in the shadows and in the midtones and the highlights. I didn't do anything because the highlights, basically the sky, and I think that's all sorted. Um, the shadows, they might be a little bit too blue, so I could pull that back a little bit. The shadows are mostly in the uh, the lower two thirds of the frame. So basically the city, right, versus the sky. So I pulled that down a little bit because I was at 35. It's getting a little bit blue. You can kind of see as I go that way, it's getting a little overdone. I'm going to pull that down. I kind of like it maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe 32. Um, and then I had some blue in the midtones at 31. I can show you how that will go. Um, that's making it look a little bit more twilighty, but I'm going really high there, and I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep it kind of where I was, which I honestly can't remember. I'm going to put it at 34 for now. Um, but then once again, I applied all of this on a luminosity mask. So I'm going to click on brush because that allows me to show you the mask. And basically, it's the exact same mask as um, in the photo filter. I could have copied and pasted, but it's the same thing. I could just, since there's no masking involved for me manually, it's all automatic. I just click luminosity mask and it applies it. Anyway, um, that's the luminosity mask. So again, everything I'm doing in color enhancer is applying more heavily in the red areas and less heavily in the areas that are not as red. So in other words, the sky, as you can tell, because that's the most luminous or the brightest part. Um, the luminosity mask is hitting that part of the photo more heavily, and it's hitting the rest, the other two thirds, if you will, the, the city and the shard itself and the river, it's hitting those less. So it's getting a lesser impact in those areas and a little bit more impact up top. So that's, um, that's what I did. And that was really, photo filter was the trick that I was referring to. I thought that was pretty cool. Picking the warm tone, applying it with a luminosity mask, adjusting the amount to get it to your um, preferred kind of look, and then doing a similar thing with color enhancer. But with color enhancer, I was more so doing some of the city stuff. If I turn that off, you can see, you know, the sky isn't hugely different, but the foreground or the lower two thirds massively different. With the color enhancer stuff that I did, it's much kind of bluer and a little bit more contrasty looking, whereas it's more green. And honestly, that's what drove me to color enhancer was when I finished with photo filter and said, hey, I got something here. I got a sky that I kind of like. Um, I was looking at the rest of the photo and that lower two thirds is way too green. And I, I just, I like green if I'm looking at a lawn or a meadow or some trees or a landscape, but 
to me, green in a city like that, it, it just doesn't look good at all. It looks kind of washed out and pukey. So I wanted to go more blue and I knew that I could come over here and adjust these color sliders in the color balance portion of Color Enhancer to get me where I wanted to go. So those two tools in tandem, super powerful combo. And that is my whole edit. So there's the before and the after, and you can see it's a massive difference. Now, I'm gonna admit, the pink in the sky is probably a little too pink. It's maybe a little bit overdone. It might make sense to go back into Photo Filter, pull that back a little bit. Um, but that little trick allowed me to make this sunset actually look like a sunset instead of like something I'm shooting through uh, glass and getting a really green, hazy, kind of kind of ugly look. I think I have much more vibrant scene that doesn't look like I was shooting through glass and it doesn't look like the all the colors are muted and ugly and you know even the water looks better. There's before and after uh, and of course I think the city looks way better. Green in the base photo and much more blue. I of course just like blue so I'm gonna think that looks better anyway. However, the key thing here was photo filter. I wanted to share that tip. I think that's it for this one, my friends. I wanted to just point that out. One more time, there's before and after. Fun tip, easy to use, luminosity mask on photo filter, applies it to the highlights, pops that sunset. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, my friends. And that is this tip from Luminar 4. I do appreciate you watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care, and adios.